Hi guys, again Johnson from DriveSuccess.com. Today I'm talking to you guys about how you should go about structuring compensation plans for your salespeople. And the reason why I'm doing this today is because I had a customer that I was working with for years, and what was happening was, you know, they 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 were not matching the type of salesperson they should have been pursuing with the type of market they were selling into, the type of customers they were selling to, and the type of products that they were making and selling. Okay. And they were just opting for the wrong compensation strategy. And because they were opting for the wrong compensation strategy and the wrong compensation plan, they were attracting the wrong salespeople. And I was going in and I was trying to teach a certain sales process in terms of you know, identifying decision makers, uh, asking leading questions in order to tie it into the val company's value proposition. But it just didn't seem to resonate with the salespeople. So I want to go over today the two most common um, compensation strategies in terms of you know whether you go with uh, low base high commission or high base and low commission so I've kind of really simplified it here today but the purpose of the video is not to talk about whether you should structure the compensation plan around gross profit or 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 sales totals it's not to talk about the products profit margins and how you should structure the bonus program and all that what I'm trying to do is to just basically get you guys to think about when should you offer someone a low base and a high commission structure okay as a basic template for compensation and when should you high, offer a high base and a low commission structure okay so i want to go over these two things and kind of simplify when these should be used and why they should be used so when it comes to low base and high commission you have to think about the salesperson and how they're going to be able to make sales because at the end of the day what you want is you want salespeople that are going to stay in your corporation or stay in your company. You know, retention, employee retention is incredibly important, but an argument can easily be made that it's far more important in terms of sales because salespeople develop very strong relationships with customers. So you'll want, you want to retain your best salespeople for obvious reasons, customer retention, uh, employee retention, but also for, for sales. The best salespeople close the best sales. Okay, So obviously when you look at low base and high commission, you're talking about a situation where, yeah, the individual's got a low base, but they have multiple outlets for sales. They have multiple customers. So the leads are qualified. In this case, you know, the leads are given to them and they're qualified. And essentially the company is saying, listen, you know, these, these customers have either bought from us in the past, they should be buying from us now, they will buy from us in the future, but either way, the leads are qualified. Here's your client list. Make the calls, make the visits. And it's a numbers game. Keep your sales funnel full, keep the opportunities flowing, and make the sales. You don't have to qualify the lead. You don't have to qualify the opportunity. It's done for you. It's always associated with a short sales cycle, almost always. Okay? These individuals, they get on the phone, they have an opportunity, short sales cycle, immediate sales cycle, and that's because they operate in a large market. They've got a large market with huge opportunities. Maybe the market is just almost too big to cover. But there's so many opportunities that it's merely a numbers game, okay? They've got a large product portfolio, A to Z, all kinds of product offerings. They've got quick inventory turns. And in that case, you know, short sales cycle and quick inventory turns go hard, hand in hand. You need salespeople in these type of markets to make immediate sales, high volume. In a lot of cases, it's high volume, low margin, okay? But the inventory has got to turn over quickly because margins are affected by inventory carrying costs. And I've done a bunch of videos. Uh, about the cost of carrying inventory, okay? And you have to have a large inventory. So in this case, what you're saying to the salespeople is, look, we're going to give you a low base, but you're going to get a high commission, but the leads are qualified, the, sh the sales are immediate, keep the sales funnel full, you're operating in a large market, there's a whole bunch of opportunities, you've got a huge product portfolio to work with, you have to sell the inventory quickly, so when we're holding on to inventory longer than we should, we'll probably make a deal in order to get you to sell that inventory quicker. And we have a large inventory. We've got 80,000 square feet. We've got thousands of products and all kinds of volume. So go out there and make the sales. That's when you do low base, high commission. Okay? And this is ideal for companies that operate, uh, you know, in terms of electronics, uh, distributors, and these type of things. This makes sense. Okay? When it comes to high base and low commission, this is more suited towards those individuals that are basically more in a business development position, okay? In this case, the leads are not qualified, okay? The opportunities are not as defined. The market is not as clear cut, okay? It's a long sales cycle. It's, it's not an immediate quick sale. Sometimes the sales cycle could be anywhere from six months to two years, okay? It's a technical type of sale. In this case, it's more of a cost per use benefit. 
it's less about knocking a couple of cents off the price and more about explaining to the customer the type of benefit from making the purchase. So it's a cost per use, and you could even put in here uh, in parentheses, you could put ROI, return on investment. How do you define the savings to the customer once they make the purchase to buy your product? Okay. So it's more of a business development, and it's longer inventory terms, which basically goes hand in hand with longer sales cycles. If you're selling a product that's very technical, you can't just be pushing the customer to make a decision long before they're ready to make it. So there's more, you have to have more patience and more understanding of how that long sales cycle works. And because it's a technical sale, it's less of a commodity type sale. You have to understand the product, you have to define the cost per use benefits, focus on the return on investment, and it's a longer sales process. And it's price sensitive. Now, when I say price sensitive, I don't mean that, you know, the price can never be lowered, but the price justifies, is justified by the cost per use benefits or the technical aspect of the product offering. Okay? So that's when it makes sense to do high base, low commission, because you want your people focusing on the long sales cycle, bringing the customer along to the point where they make the decision themselves, and basing it around the technical aspects of the product offering, which is basically quality, longer life, cost per use benefits. So that's essentially the two breakdowns. Now in both cases, it's about keeping the sales funnel full, okay? And I've done a couple of videos about this process. But in this aspect of low base, high commission, the leads that go into the sales funnel are all established. And it's merely a question of moving from one, two, three, four, and then five, which is basically something you would call the order. Okay, so move those qualified leads down, and you, it's a numbers game. You've got so many leads, you've got so many customers, short sales cycle, quick sales, immediate sales. That makes sense because the salesperson has plenty of opportunity to make extra income. You're doing the same thing in this, but in this situation, the sales funnel takes longer. And in some cases, you're defining the entire funnel itself. So you know, you're, you're putting in unqualified leads and sometimes you have to take them out because they get further down here and you find out that they're not the ideal customer and you take them out. They go down from one to two to three to four and then they have to be taken out and you don't get the five, which is the order. So look, they both operate with the idea of keeping the sales funnel full, but understand that, you know, if you try to run with this type of business model and give an individual a low base and a high commission, it will not work. They will be upset at the fact that they have to qualify the leads. They will be frustrated by the long sales cycle. They will not understand the cost per use benefit of the product offering. They will push for a decision before the customer is ready. They will focus less on business development. They will not appreciate the longer uh, inventory turns because when you hold inventory for a longer period, you've got to have the profit margins to absorb the holding costs. And they're not going to be as respectful towards price. They're going to want to make these quick, immediate sales. Because anybody that comes from a low base and a high commission structure is quick on their feet and ready to make a deal. Okay? So this is, by, you know, this is not a hard and fast rule, but when it comes to structuring your compensation strategies, and your plans, understand the type of market you're servicing, your product offering, the size of your inventory, how quickly it moves, and how fast sales are made. So that's it, compensation, compensation strategies for salespeople. Ian Johnson, DriveSuccess.com, bye-bye.